So let, let's move to the final talk of this session. Uh, it's by Anthony from Cornell. Go ahead, Anthony. Sure, give me one moment. Um, share screen. Do you see the presentation? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so thank you. Uh, my name is Anthony and thank you for being here today for this last talk. Um, so on behalf of my co-authors, I'll be presenting our work on understanding the impact of SMS-based practice tests um, for secondary school students who are studying for the baccalaureate in Cameroon. So as noted in the title, our research is situated in Cameroon, a nation in West Central Africa. And in the French speaking parts of this country, high school students must pass the baccalaureate or BAC in order to receive their diploma. And this test is probably the most important exam in many students' lives um, because secondary education is non-compulsory. Passing the BAC opens up many opportunities in forms of employment and higher education and really marks the beginning of adult life. Um, because of its importance, students can spend the entire month of May just preparing for the exam outside the end of the school year in April. However, pass rates are historically low with only 60% passing in 2019 and failure results in additional schooling and financial burdens in terms of the cost of tuition, uh, tutoring, and so forth, opportunity costs. Um, so prior work has shown that practice tests can improve scores on students' exams. And we wanted to see if they could also help students better prepare for the baccalaureate. Uh, we developed and sent multiple choice practice questions to students' own personal phones via SMS. And a screenshot of the quiz is on a student's phone is in the background of the slide. Um, to describe the workflow in more detail from the student's perspective, um, the quiz was broken into weeks. And at the start of each week, an introduction message with instructions was sent. Uh, students received a multiple choice question with three or four options per day and could respond by sending the single letter of their answer choice. Uh, the next day, students received the correct answer for their previous question. And at the end of the week, a message with performance feedback was sent. So to inform the design of our intervention, we built along upon a long history of literature on practice tests. Um, practice tests are smaller, low stakes tests that are intended to help students learn rather than assess their learning. And these tests can be administered by teachers or self-administered by students. Uh, practice tests can improve results on some new exams by enhancing the cognitive processes behind learning. And we discussed three of these processes as supported by past literature and describe how they were integrated into the design of our quiz intervention. Uh, the most direct cognitive process by which practice testing helps promote learning outcomes is through the testing effect. And this is the observation that engaging with practice tests requires the student to retrieve memories of past learned materials. And this can strengthen those retrieval routes and make it more likely for this information to be recalled in the future. To help with our quizzes engaging memory, we made efforts to ensure that our questions were relevant to students. We recruited secondary school teachers in Cameroon to write our questions and weighted the subject frequency of questions to correspond with students' self-reported specializations. Uh, we also encouraged deeper engagement with the material uh, by providing students feedback on past performance. And we synchronize the correct answer feedback to be sent out to all students at the same time to reduce incidents of cheating by sharing answers. Another benefit of practice tests is that they can engage, uh, encourage formative self-assessment. Self and this is the ability for students to identify areas of lack of understanding earlier on in the process so they can more effectively focus further studying efforts. To encourage this, we group questions by subject per week, for example, only math questions one week and biology questions the next week, and provided students with uh, performance summaries at the end of the week to help students identify which subjects they perform poorly on. And finally, because practice tests are smaller and more frequent tests, they can prompt distributed study. And this is the occurrence of studying at regularly spaced intervals, which can improve learning over cramming or bunch study. To prompt students to follow a distributed studying schedule, we sent questions and answer feedback messages on a daily basis during the evenings when students were less likely to be engaged with other activities. Secondly, we also used challenging questions which could not be answered by memory alone to encourage students to look up or work out a solution. 
So we designed a study to deploy and evaluate the effects of our practice quiz intervention. We recruited uh, 1,924 students from across 23 different schools in Yaoundé, the capital of Cameroon. And during this recruitment, students reported what subjects their version of the back would emphasize and gave us consent to send messages to their personal cell phones that might help them prepare for the back. Um, 500 students received the practice quizzes for uh, nine weeks before the back. 924 students were in a control group and received no messages. And 500 students received messages of encouragement as an additional form of control. Our intervention period lasted nine weeks, including about four weeks past the end of the school term in April. And at the end of the of May, uh, students sat for the back and after the back, but before results were released, we conducted 11 focus groups with 58 students who received messages from us. And these focus groups were recorded, transcribed, translated, and analyzed using thematic methods. And we found some um, interesting expected and unexpected results. One of the more expected results was related to prompting distributed study. Here, one participant describes that effect. She says, it pushed me to look things up, especially when a question came and I did not have the answer. So I went to look through my notebooks. And at the, at the time that I spent looking for the answer, I realized that I was already reviewing. Uh, because students had to look through their past notes to answer challenging questions, this required them to exercise their structures of knowledge and understanding of what constitutes related material. And this provides some evidence that the testing effect can also work through strengthening students' organization of knowledge. Our practice quizzes also impacted studying behaviors through formative self-assessment. Uh, for example, this student reported receiving questions covering English comprehension, and that this was eye-opening for identif identifying their gaps in the subject. However, it's important to note that this benefit was not experienced evenly and depended on students' studying strategies. For example, some students focused their efforts on subjects that were no they were most comfortable with and strong in, and they felt were important on their upcoming back. And students who follow a more holistic strategy may not experience as many formative self-assessment benefits. Our most unexpected finding was how students adopted practice tests to use as a collaborative studying tools. In our design, we originally focused on preventing cheating and the sharing of answers. And this was in line with past literature, which suggests that sharing may reduce engagement with the material and thus reduce the testing effect. However, we found that sharing practice tests could actually be an indicator of increased engagement. As described by this participant, some students shared the quizzes with friends and engaged in games and discussions around the questions. And other students worked on the questions together with uh, family members, classmates, teachers. And in this way, practice questions could also be used as a focus of collaborative study. And at least for practice tests distributed outside the classroom, sharing questions and answers could be a sign of higher engagement it might actually be desirable to encourage. So in addition to our qualitative results from our focus group discussions, we collected back pass rates to try to compare our different treatment groups. Uh, to do this, we collected pass lists from 14 different testing centers in Yaoundé, which were either within or affiliated with our sampled schools. Um, these pass lists were the names of passing students publicly posted in front of testing centers uh, and sometimes in other media. Collecting this data was challenging due to its physical nature and the lack of common identifiers and the mismatch between testing centers and schools. Ultimately, we were not able to find a statistically significant difference between our groups, um, and this may be due to the lack of granularity in a binary pass or no pass outcome variable, or due to the high stakes of the back simply outweighing the effect size of the practice tests. So in summary, while testing our intervention, we saw both expected and unexpected impacts. We did see evidence of a testing effect through the exercises of structures of related knowledge. We also did find that engagement was important, but that sharing can actually be a sign of greater engagement. And while we saw evidence of formative self-assessment, these benefits were uneven depending on students' studying strategies. And for some engaged students, we did find that our intervention was successful at prompting distributed study. Uh, further results, such as on forms of participation, uh, the affordances of SMS, and the possibility of distributed classroom environments are also discussed in the paper which I encourage you guys to read. Um, this research suggests several opportunities for future work, some of which I'll highlight here. Exams such as the back provide a unique opportunity to really examine the effectiveness of practice tests on standardized exams, uh, which are probably the most high stakes exams in students' lives. 
understanding how practice tests can be used collaboratively and outside of the classroom might be crucial for building effective distributed learning environments and could also enhance collaborative learning processes inside of classrooms. Uh, for developing contexts as internet and educational technologies become increasingly available, as well as the challenges of the ongoing pandemic, addressing remote learning might become especially important to do at this time. And finally, as many educational techniques and tools in the Global South are adopted from developed contexts based on upon research that occurs in the West, doing this research in the Global South instead might validate and strengthen our existing understandings and highlight different aspects of those techniques or tools. So I'd like to thank our sponsors and our uh, partners, particularly those affiliated with PeaceNet who made this work possible. And I also want to thank you guys for your interest in our research and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Andini, for the excellent talk. Uh, any questions? Can I ask one? Uh, I have the mic. Sure, sure, Manor, go ahead. Uh, hi, Anthony. Uh, very interesting work and talk. Um, the question I have is about the uh, questions that you used. You mentioned you asked some teachers to create these questions, but did you have access to prior exam questions? So if our objective is to improve the pass percentage, the tests should reflect what is going to appear in the actual exam. And did you have that opportunity is my first question. Uh, yeah, so um, absolutely. Uh, there is kind of a dearth of sort of preparation materials in this context. Um, the, uh, some of it is available, but uh, I think the back is really run differently than like standardized tests in perhaps Western contexts like, um, well, it is a Western test, but like standardized tests like SAT and so forth. Um, so we didn't have access to those materials. Um, and a lot of the questions were we had to source through through asking teachers who had past experience with the test. One of the concerns with such tests, high stakes especially, is testing is to pass the exam rather than to increase the knowledge. So these two get separated in the process of high stake tests. And if any SMS based effect to help students to pass the test, then it has to go from finding out what is the best set of test questions you can give so that they can actually pass the test, never mind if they learn anything or not. Sorry, yeah, that's just a comment. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone, anyone else has a question? Uh, please feel free to ask the question without raising hand uh, because I think there are a few people have reported that they are not able to raise hand. Sure, I have a question. Um, uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, you know, given that um, the impact on the actual test itself was not easy to discern, I'm wondering, you know, why focus on practice tests, especially for this kind of, um, you know, these kinds of questions? It seems like it seems like, you know, I mean, I understand the value of passing tests for the baccalaureate, but it seems like that's not necessarily getting at the underlying learning that you would want to focus on. Uh, so let me just repeat the question in case I misunderstand it. Um, you're asking what can we do to focus on the actual learning rather than um, something like practice tests. Um, I, I, well, first of all, I, I slightly disagree. Even uh, I think Manhar's previous comment hints to that, right? Even though practice, t uh, even though high stakes standardized tests are, you know, probably not the best measurements of learning and so forth. Unfortunately, they, they exist and they're what their certifications are based upon. So they're just really crucial to students' lives and students' future um, outcomes. And so it is important just based on that, based on that, that reality. Um, as for learning, I think actually, yeah, practice tests probably have better impact on learning outcomes than, than, than pure like passing a standardized test. Um, and there are different ways that you might want to, uh, which are some, some of those are discussed in the paper, but there are different ways that you might want to, you know, encourage, use them to encourage more engagement in the classroom, just, uh, just beyond uh, the goal of passing the, the back. Um, and, and so I think those are possible and I think those are valuable as well.
hope that answers the question. <laughs> Thank you. Carlene, you're muted. Uh, yeah. You're still muted. <laughs> I know. I was just getting, I don't have a question yet. I was okay. just waiting to make some All right. general announcements. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, if we're wrapping up, and I want to thank all the presenters um, and Mohit for doing a great job in uh, monitoring and, and managing the session. Um, we have, I hope you're all paying attention to the updates of the website. We have um, now uploaded all of the uh, papers from the ACM Digital Library. So there'll be two ways that the papers are available. Um, one is on each of the um, paper titles on the conference program on the website, it'll link to the ACMDL, and then also at the top of that page, there's a link to a Google Drive where they're all available, and so this way we'll, we'll have two options. Um, and I look forward to having, seeing everyone in the poster sessions. And then tomorrow we have more session, more papers, and our closing um, keynote. And I think that's it. Questions about process or anything else? Okay, great. We'll see you at the coffee breaks. Uh, but we've also um, kind of done something new with the coffee breaks. We're doing random assignment to make little uh, breakout groups. So it's a, it's a nice time to be able to meet others and chit chat. And we actually got to meet Nikki's dog in the last one. So that was fun um, and had some good conversations about different ICTD topics. So we'll see you over there. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you, bye.